the New York City is dead story is uh, taking over uh, New York in a way. Now, I'm going back to like my Barstool New York roots where we used to really cover the city. I used mm-hmm. to blog like New York City specific stuff. And this would be, you know, a headline that we covered for probably a month straight. Uh, it sounds like people want this city to be dead, you know? Yeah. It's, it's very similar to like a lot of the sports reporters who wanted coronavirus to cancel their sport because mm-hmm. I think they wanted to feel woke or the, or whatever it was. Uh, people who want the, the, the numbers for coronavirus to be bad. It's like they want to proclaim New York City is dead. I think maybe for two reasons. I think one is like, the politicized coronavirus arguments. And I think two is like people don't like New York and probably have a lot of New Yorkers they don't like and they want it to be, you know, dead and gone. Yeah. And it's just not. Like, <laughs> I don't think it's a matter of opinion. It might be, uh, people keep talking about the winter. Like right now you can go outside and there are outdoor restaurants and everything. People, the cliche right now is everyone says it feels like it's a European vibe sitting mm-hmm. on the streets and the sidewalks. Uh, maybe in the winter that stops and then these restaurants are truly screwed because we can't do indoor seating yet, but we're not allowed, you know, nobody wants to sit outside. So maybe then a lot of these places will be in trouble. Maybe even what they're doing right now with restaurants and the makeshift patchwork that people are doing to keep their businesses alive, maybe that's only sustainable for like six months or a year. And what's happening economically now will be you know you'll be screwed in the future uh, maybe i don't mm-hmm. know it it could potentially be the precursor and all the single signals that this is a dying city that's above my head i don't know if you're telling me that you can predict this is how cities fall and this is the beginning of it all good but what i'm telling you is just right now if you go out in the city it's just not quote unquote debt and maybe this is a semantic game Maybe, you know, when you see, if you walk a block and you see like five boarded up businesses and that to you feels dead, yeah, you're going to see that. Mm-hmm. There are parts, there are neighborhoods that have been completely uh, shut down. There are, uh, there are neighborhoods and boroughs that are more violent right now. But to me, that's not like it's over. I think it's, it's weird. Maybe it's just the perspective we have as lifelong New Yorkers. People... I don't know who's saying this. I don't think any lifelong New Yorkers are saying it. Um, but no, people I think that the city, that. people think that the city has always been what it was like last year. It's like it's the city's always evolving. Yeah. Like there were bars on Second Avenue when I graduated that like that was the only spot to go. Second Avenue in the 50s. I ask, you know, kids the kids that work in the office now, like, oh, where do you guys go out? And it's like all Lower East Side and Chelsea, and they're like, Midtown? You went out in Midtown? I'm like, yeah, man, like Metro 53 and Bar Room and Sutton Place. Like, and some of those places are still around, and they're not. You know, I mean, like the place I met my wife on the Upper East Side literally sunk into the ground. It, like, the, the building was collapsing. They tore the whole thing down. It's not there anymore. If I go to the Upper East Side, it's there's like more retail and it's not like as boozy. And I'm like, Oh, you could, I could call that area dead. Yeah. And, and I used to work in Chelsea and it was terrifying. And then like all the clubs popped up and it was like club row for a little while. And that was terrifying in a different way. And then, you know, those places got shut down and it rebuilds and it changes. Like the city's always changed. So this is a big, this is obviously changing a lot of cities and it may, like you said, have this, let this long-term effect where I think the bigger effect is the fact that people can just work from home now. Right. And, you know, coming into the city was a big thing. But I suspect that if we get back to normal life, that will have an impact. I think more people will be able to work from home. I, but I just don't think that the whole workforce is going to stay at home. And the city will, will you know bounce back it may take a little while like one we have to get past coronavirus but i don't think it's going to kill the city indefinitely i mean if you looked at new york in like the 70s and 80s 80s and even into the early 90s like pre-giuliani cleanup that to me would have been like this city's dead you know the squeegee men era where it was mobs and and violence and peep shows and homeless yeah like and then it just got cleaned up and it changed it's good it's definitely different i'm not saying it's perfect but, you know, to me, even let's say, all right, commercial real estate, let's say, is dead. High rises and skyscrapers, all that, not going to be necessary for work. That's going to be 
a radical change and certainly will take a hit. But like, so then New York City can become like maybe theoretically more affordable because people don't like have to live on Wall Street right. and have to live in these like uh, commerce districts. And then it's like, so you're telling me it can be like maybe more affordable for like young people and then it's not a, a center of, it's not Wall Street and it's not, you know, Midtown where it's all corporations. It's more like, you know, going to be hipster vibes and yeah. uh, like, or it can just like artist artsy types. Like that to me, again, like I've been saying, it kind of feels like better right now. Like that might be a different version, but I think that sounds like a, a cooler city where it's like, this is more about, this is not about work. With New York, you have to take into consideration is one of the unique selling points of New York. The, the differentiator is the subway. So Manhattan yeah. is, is not that big, but you can like shoot back and forth all over the place. And it's built vertically, like more huge skyscrapers than anybody else. So like we're, we're stacking a lot of people in like a smaller space. You can go and you can all get to it easier but not all cities are built like that so now the subway is less valuable because less people want to be packed in close where germs can can be shared right mm -hmm. well la is the you know the number two city in new york in some ways the number one city it's not even a city it's a right. county it's all right. spread out and and you know now so now it's like what if it's less about manhattan and and Brooklyn and Queens and like Long Island all become part of it and and Jersey becomes more part of it and you think of it as the New York City metro area and it's all a little bit more spread out. So you want to call the city dead when in reality like all the same people are still going to be able to work there. It's just going to be like slightly different. I mean, you know, yeah, people want to say like, yeah, places are going out of business. We have like 40 million people unemployed. That's going to happen. Those people eventually are like eventually we're going to we're going to bounce back. It's going to take a while. I'm not like super optimistic this is going to happen right around the corner, but like well, to say you know why would the city just die? Maybe maybe it doesn't even. But what I'm and so if these people are telling me like I've seen this before and the writing's on the wall, it's going to die, is dying. It's a different argument than like right now. Right. You know, that I just don't understand. And and yes, there are people moving out. There are constantly people moving out of new york city it's a it's a it's a transplanting type of, of like there's not a lifelong new yorkers but there's always people coming to new york to try to make it here right. and there's always people who are like i'm too old for this place i'm leaving so it's always constantly like evolving like that right. that i can't believe it's like oh yeah the rich people are fleeing to like montauk like yeah that's also that's, first of all right. they do that in the summer every yeah, single year so right. I'm like, now the fall is going to be weird because this is normally September is normally when everybody comes back. Maybe less people are going to come back. But to say like normally that uh, there's always an influx of people, I would think that New York City is like always more people coming to it than going out of it. So for the first time in a long, long time, that right. might not be true in the heart oh, of an epidemic. Yeah. I mean, so maybe let's have a little leeway here. Maybe that is a, a trend for a while. Maybe it's going to be you know, a negative rate for, for a little bit, but I just like, you know, and so me, you know, again, semantics, you want to tell me the New York city you, you once knew is gone. Probably definitely. Right. But you could have said that about like pre nine 11 and you could have said that differently about like when immigrants came and like all, you know, uh, in like the, the, the son of Sam probably changed everything. It was like, we used to like leave our doors open and it was like happy. And now it's like, no, it's fucking dangerous and crazy. Like all of these things, uh, there are just part of me. Um, and I know I did this with coronavirus. Part of me is like the world will never be the same, but part of me is like, it probably will bounce back and, you know, in a different way. But to think that like, this is the end of of everything is kind of crazy. Yeah, it's just like, where are the 20 something year old kids that would yeah. have yeah. gone to New York City gonna go that's not like another city? Like, do you do you think right. like I, I could see that like if you were in Jersey and your choices were like Philly or New York, like right now I would pick. I, I would think that it would be more affordable and a better time to go to New York because if you're going to go to Philly, it's probably the same thing. Like you're probably just as you're probably risking yeah. just as much with the potential of coronavirus in the fall and in the winter. So like, where are those people going to go? Why would those people suddenly, are they just going to become like suburb people, a 24 year old? Well, that, I could see like, uh, 
maybe the, the city becomes more LA ish where it's like, yeah, that, like Long Island, like sure. a ball, like Long Beach is like the spot to be. Cause it's like, we don't need to cram into Manhattan. We can go True. to Westchester, Long Island, Jersey, and it just becomes a bigger area. Sure. Maybe. Right. And then it should just affect like, everything. Like what, what, what so what's going to happen now? Like uh, there'll be no, mom and people keep saying the mom and pop shops and it's like i mean there'll still be some people in manhattan that need to eat if anything i think prices will come down so that's like, what i'm saying like all right we will will there be another 100 million dollar penthouse type of sky rise going up probably not i mean if you look around if you look at the new york city skyline let's say post 9 11 because the towers fell after that you know it used to be like the the empire state building and then eventually the Freedom Tower mixed in with like the Chrysler building. And now it's like there are there are there are buildings that are dwarfing the Empire State Building that are just like apartments. You know right. what I mean? Like they're, they're, these are buildings I don't even know that it used to be like you know the names of right. the hundred story buildings. Now it's like there's that one on Central Park, there's that one over there, there's the one up that's going up. And so like the skyline radically changed over the last like 15, 20 years. And so maybe that stops. I don't think anybody's planning to build any more of those right now. But those buildings and these apartments do exist. And if people are fleeing, landlords and owners are going to get their money. And like, so if you're telling me that like rent will become more affordable and the reason that people will come to the city is more about like social life and art and creativity and architecture and uh, music and all like culture. That's not pretty good to me. It's pretty cool. And like, and again, currently right now, I, I went out a couple times. I had like two of like the nicest dates I've ever been on because we were sitting outside. We sat in the park. There was guys playing live music. We walked along the water. People yeah. are out and about. I mean, it's just literally. There is no, dead. there is no better time also in New York than like, I mean, now the weather is so fucked, but like the springtime in Manhattan and like the early fall, whenever you get warm, but not destructively humid, it, like being out in the city is, it, I, it's like the best experience. Yeah. I, I don't know how people could not want to just like walk up and down whatever Avenue is hot, whether it's Lower East Side, Upper East Side, Midtown, whatever, wherever the bars are. For your generation, we're just walking around, seeing people out. You don't need to see 50,000 people out. You know, yeah. you just need to see that people are going in and out of bars. People are going in and out of restaurants. If you, if you didn't see any of that, it would be weird. But that's yeah. still happening. I mean, like, there's no tourists. There's nobody taking pictures. There's no, there's no uh, like, anti-Semitic Elmo in Times Square. There's none of that. Like, it's great. Yeah. And I hate reset. this city. <laughs> and I'm like, even I'm enjoying it right now. Again, maybe that's a bad sign for the future. But the people who said it's currently a wrap because they saw some people getting in a U-Haul. Uh, 20 the, people around the first of the month. I'm like, I don't know. And then, But then everybody in the comments will be like, oh, no, no, no. Like moving companies are reporting record numbers. I'm like, I'm not, it's, I'm not saying it's not a record. I, I, it could be more people are leaving than okay, coming ever okay. before for a reason. Let's say that three million people left we're left with like six or seven million people right it's like we could we you are so overcrowded that i think if you cut it in half we just we yeah. thanos this shit right and, and but like, that's all idea what was thanos doing it was all about resources and <laughs> not being overcrowded and elite and being like parasites that's what we did the coronavirus is just thanos this city and i yeah. think it's for the good and that would have to be net three million out because it's like and zero people are going to come. There's going to be zero young people that aren't afraid of this, that are willing to wear a mask, that are going to come in and say, this is my opportunity. Like, right. I'm going to take it. I've always wanted to go to New York. I'm not that afraid of the virus. Right. And, you know, I mean, like. Right now, And they're like, yeah, I don't know. This was our plan. And we're going to, like, see through it. Now, who knows? Maybe one day we get old takes exposed. And this is absolutely the beginning of the end. And we didn't see, like, we didn't know that this was the, all the telltale signs of, like, the fall of an empire. Um, but. At the moment, I'm just like, you can't tell me otherwise. It's like, I can see these people on social media or outsiders saying it's dead. And I'm like, yeah. well, I'm there every day and I'm not afraid for my life. I'm going out. I'm doing social things. Yeah. I'm going to restaurants. 
but no, nope, it's dead. Okay, like well. like what I what I was saying before is like if you've seen the city evolve and change, you can go to a neighborhood that used to be popping and it's changed, and you could be like, that neighborhood is now dead. And it's like, well, that neighborhood is now something else. Yeah. It's not, it's not what it yeah, used yeah. to be. Like, you know, we wouldn't people are like partying in like Alphabet City that used to be like, you know, the most dangerous part of the city to go to. And also there was like just nothing there. It was like, why would you end up there? Mm-hmm. That was crazy. And now it's like, you know, cool and popping and hot. It's like, uh, you know, things, things change. This is obviously like just a paradigm shifting thing. A lot, a lot of stuff is going to change, but to say that it's just like, there's nothing going on there when <laughs> the people who are there, are like we all, we all went out to dinner. We all went drinking. We went and we hung out like, you know, it's like I, I, you know, used to go to Alphabet City and you, you see like a, you know, like smoke crack with a homeless man, and now it's like I can go to Alphabet City and smoke crack with a homeless man outside yeah. of a mixology bar with a guy <laughs> who wears suspenders and uses one of those torches on a block of wood to catch the smoke in your new craft cocktail. But there's still going to be homeless people smoking crack. Always right. have been, always will be. Don't tell me that the city's dead because of that. 